morning, everyone. Uh, week one press conference uh, uh, opened up with a statement from Coach Simmons and then open up to questions. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Don't see any faces, but I'm assuming everyone's there. <laughs> um, Obviously, it's game week. We're very excited. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, had a really good training camp, in our opinion, and thought the guys um, really worked hard and got themselves prepared for this opening weekend. Um, obviously, we know um, with the magnitude of the opponent, uh, we'll have to be you know, hitting on all cylinders. You know, whenever you try to go and take on a, a program that <clears throat> on paper is bigger, faster, and stronger, the margin for error uh, is a lot less. And so for us, that emphasis on attention to detail, um, our execution, our operation, as far as our tempo, as far as um, our snap count, watching the ball on defense, all of those little things uh, is going to be critical this week. And so um, we're really stressing those those uh, points. thought the guys had a great practice last night, very spirited, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy. And I, I think they're excited about the opportunity to open the season up in Chapel Hill against against the, the Tar Heels of Carolina. So. Um, Glad to be on this morning and look forward to answering uh, you guys' questions. I guess, Coach, I'll start things off. Um, the opportunity to play week zero, I mean, one of few people that get to, I mean, more eyes on you guys to play a nationally kind of game like this, one of the few that's going on. What, what are the opportunities for this, for FAMU, for you guys? You had to start things a little bit earlier, but it also gets you a chance to be kind of one of the only teams in the limelight. Yeah, week zeros are definitely um, good in that aspect that you are one of the only games on. So a lot of eyes will be on this game. Um, I think there's a lot of buildup around uh, this game. You're talking about one of the top uh, HBCU and FCS programs in Florida a &M, uh going up against a, a an ACC opponent um, that's, you know, coming off somewhat of a disappointing season. Uh, high expectations last season. Obviously, they didn't achieve all the goals that they set out for themselves. And so for them, uh, I know they'll be hungry. Uh, but for us, you know, we feel we have unfinished business as well. So a great opportunity, a national televised game. Uh, and, and we've told our guys, you know, this isn't a quote-unquote money game. Uh, this is a get money game, you know. So for guys like Isaiah Land, guys like Xavier Smith, Chris Fadul, B.J. Bowler, uh, Darius Fagan, uh, this gives them a great opportunity to show NFL scouts, personnel, that they can, quote-unquote, play with the big boys. And so this is, this is something that these guys are looking forward to, uh, but also us as coaches as well, right? Because, again, we, we want the opportunity to show showcase our coaching ability against um, a Power 5 opponent. And so, again, exciting opportunity, and, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's the official football season. Coach, I know we kind of talked about it last week, um, but just what kind of advantage do you see getting on the field in week zero ahead of a, a big conference game? Again, I know we kind of touched on it, but uh, just having that good competition, good quality competition to get those guys, uh, those newcomers, some really good quality game experience. Um, and it's kind of like two-parter uh, in that same token. What kind of challenges have you seen that North Carolina is going to present as a, as a Power 5 opponent? Well, I think the opportunity to play uh, a game before conference play uh, is, is great for our football team. Um, we have a lot of returning starters, but we also have a lot of newcomers and guys that we'll be depending on this year uh, to achieve our ultimate goal. And so to get those guys great uh, quality reps against a quality opponent uh, before we open up the conference open up conference play next, next week or the week after, uh, it's something that I think we can take great advantage of. You know, you have guys like Jeremy Musa, uh, Jalen Goss, um, A.J. Davis, Isaiah Major, um, James Ash, you know, a lot of the names that you'll hear a lot of uh, this week and this season, you know, those guys haven't played a lot of college reps. You know, they were highly recruited guys. They all come from Power 5 programs, um, but they have not played a lot of college snaps. And so for them to get that game experience, I think will be critical as we transition the following week uh, to conference play uh, in a game that many uh, are dubbing the, the SWAT game of the year, right? And so uh, I think from that aspect, uh, it, it's great for us. And then there's an old saying in football that the biggest jump you make or the greatest improvement you make is between the first game and the second game. And so hopefully that holds true for us. And um, it gives us a great opportunity to go to Miami Gardens 
and, and start conference playoff on the right foot, you know. But obviously, we can't think about that right now. The focus is solely North Carolina. And, um, you know, for a team like that, um, they're a fast football team. You know, they play extremely fast on offense. Uh, Phil Longo uh, is one of the, the, the top offensive coordinators in America. Um, he's had success everywhere he's gone. And uh, obviously, they're going to try to push the tempo. They have one of the most dynamic receivers in the country in Josh Downs. Uh, caught over 100 balls last season. So you definitely have to know where he is. Uh, their running game is always very strong. And so, again, they'll pose a lot of challenges for our defense just in how fast they're going to operate. And so we have to be prepared to communicate well, be prepared to get lined up and uh, and take on a team that's going to put pressure on us really for four quarters on that side of the ball. Uh, on the defensive side, obviously uh, transitioning with a new defensive coordinator. And so, you know, for us trying to figure out offensively exactly what they're going to be is probably the biggest challenge for us. You know, once the game starts, we're able to kind of see if they marry some of the things that we've studied from uh, some of the staff that they've been a part of um, you know, is what we're really looking looking forward to seeing. And so, um, but they got, they're got very, very um, physical on the defensive side, you know, as far as their size. Um, Interior-wise, they have some pretty stout defensive tackles. Um, their secondary guys are all six foot and above. And so they have a great length out there on the perimeter. And so that's going to pose some challenges for guys like Isaiah, uh, like Xavier uh, Smith, and, you know, uh, uh, Trey Davis, David Manigo, you know, the guys that we're going to take Darren Oxen down. Um, we have some speed out wide, but, you know, we're not the longest receiver core in the country. So to be able to go up against DBs that are all six foot and greater is definitely going to pose some challenges for us. But, again, that's, that's you know, why we play the game. And, and up front, we're going to see if our offensive line can hold up against their defensive line and see if our defensive line can – can disrupt their, their their run game and their passing game because typically in these type of games that's where you see the greatest uh, mismatches is kind of the, in the trenches and so we're looking forward to seeing how we match up against against the Power Five team. Hey, Coach, um, what's up, Coach? It's, it's Gerald. Uh, you named all the the transfer guys and a lot of those guys came from Power Five programs. You got AJ Davis came from um, Pitt, which is in, which is in the ACC. Musa come from SEC Vanderbilt. Just tell me. Uh, how you would kind of rely on those guys that, um, and you know, you say, you know, they, you know, some of them didn't play many snaps like Musa, but just tell me those guys that have been in that environment, tell me how they will assist you come Saturday. Well, hopefully the stage won't be too big <clears throat> and they've been in those stadiums before. Um, you know, again, Jeremy played in the SEC and so he's played in front of 70, 80, 90,000 know, screaming fans on the road. You know, uh, AJ played at Pitt. You know, so he's actually played in Keenan Stadium himself. Uh, Jalen Goss, uh, Kobe Gross, you know, uh, Chris Williams, those guys played at Florida State. And so they they went to uh, Keenan Stadium last season, right? And so for those guys, uh, I don't think the atmosphere will be uh, too big for them. Uh, but for hopefully most of our guys, obviously when we, you know, last year we played in Miami Gardens at Hard Rock. We played um, South Florida, you know, down in Raymond James. Um, Florida Classic down at Camping World. And so we played in big venues. We played on national television. And so hopefully uh, the, the stage won't be something that uh, gets our guys out of whack. You know, we'll, we'll go to the stadium and we'll walk around and we'll see the dimensions of the stadium. But at the end of the day, uh, last time I checked, you know, the, the football field at Keenan Stadium is 100 yards by 53 and a third. And that's the same regardless of, of how big the, the outside is, the, the, the stands, the, the locker room, uh, you know, all those type of amenities. But football is football for us. And for and, and so our focus really is what happens between those white lines. Let's execute. Uh, let's, let's line up in front of the guy, uh, know who we have in protection, know who we have to cover when they have the ball, know our lanes and coverage phases, um, all the things that it takes to play winning football. That's what our focus is, not on the venue, not on the fact that it's a national televised game, not the fact that it's a road game. Let's just go and execute and play good, sound football the way, you know, we know how to. And I think we give ourselves a chance to go in and, and shock the world. Hey Coach, also tell me about just the magnitude of just being able to go up there and play North Carolina. I know we hit on it a little earlier, but just tell me about that. Um, you know, being on the ACC network and, you know, having you guys, you know, just plastered on television for, for that game. Well, like I said earlier, you know, for us, uh, it's, it's all about how you approach the game. Right. Uh, most teams at this level play, quote unquote, guarantee games. Uh, some people call those money games. And uh, but for us, that's not the approach that we'll take 
right? For us, our approach is, again, we say this is a get money game. You know, this gives us a chance to go and, and show, you know, NFL scouts, show um, our fans, show the nation what type of team we have, right? The, the talent we have, the coaching we have, um, the camaraderie that we have as a football team. It's a great opportunity to, to do that on a national stage. We're one of the very few games on uh, at 8 o'clock Saturday evening. I don't know if there are many other games on, so – it's a good chance that many eyes will be on that football game, right? I think a lot of people are starting to hear about Isaiah Land, right, at the FBS level, at the NFL level. Well, it gives them a chance to see if he's as good as advertised. You know, they've probably heard of Xavier Smith. They've heard of a lot of the guys the, that we have. They've seen the All-American list. They've seen the All-Conference list. And so it really gives people a chance to see, is this kid as good as, uh, you know, FAMU saying he is, the media saying he is, you know, all, all the draft. Uh, experts say he is and so that that's the opportunity that our guys have so we're excited about that and, and I think um, as long as we continue to focus on that and not the quote-unquote stage uh, I, I think it will give our guys a chance to go up relaxed confident knowing that we put the work in over training camp and this week having a great week of preparation that we can go in and play our best football. Coach, Oh, coach, I want to ask you, uh, one of the, you, you, you mentioned the other players who have played in the ACC, but you didn't mention yourself. So how does that experience, how do you utilize your experience as an ACC quarterback? I'm reading through the uh, information Josh sent us, thank you, and where they go back and talk about how what you did at Clemson while you were the quarterback. But how do you utilize that experience of being an ACC level quarterback, playing top notch and doing high quality things? How do you transfer that into your coaching and build up your players that you currently have and prepare them for this level of competition? Uh, well, you know, uh, I'm not the only one uh, in that regard. You know, uh, Joe Henry, offensive coordinator, played at the University of Arkansas. Um, you know, we have Coach James Spade who played at UTEP. Um, you know, uh, James Cozy, I, I knew Cornish coach, played at Florida State. You know, Devon Morgan, I knew safety coach, played at Virginia Tech. So many of us have played in Keenan Stadium in some capacity, and we and we played – Power five football. So for us, it, you know, it, that experience, I, I guess, can help, you know, just to kind of tell the guys what to expect, um, you know. But again, I, I, I'm confident that Rattler Nation will show up and, get, and give us a great fan base, right? A, 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 a group that's going to cheer these guys on, that's going to really get behind them. And we feed off that energy, right? Even when we go into the, the enemy territory, you know, we can always rest assured that we'll look up and see a sea of orange and green rooting our team on and that gives our guys the confidence to go out there and play for mother fam you and so um you know we don't want to blow it up too much you know i, I think there's a fine line between it, well, preparing the guys for what they're going to see uh but also overhyping it to make them nervous about it right it's, it's a football stadium you know, they, they have a few more stands uh, a few more seats than we have in bragg their press box is is, is bigger um their locker room you know their facility is, is bigger than gallimore Powell. um but when they run out of that locker room, they're going to run to a field again that's got the same dimensions as, as the field here at Bragg Memorial Stadium, right? And so if you focus on that and not look up in the stands to see how many people are there or worry about how big the locker room is and all of those things or the fact that there are TV cameras all around uh, from ACC Network, then we can focus on doing what we need to do, which is playing a great brand of football. And so that's what we talk about. You know, we don't really talk about much else. Um, you know, again, I, there'll be some nostalgia from – me and Cozy and, you know, Coach Morgan being in that stadium again. Uh, some of my greatest memories as a college football player are in Keenan Stadium. And so it'll be great to walk into the stadium again and reminisce a little bit, um, walk on the spots on the field where I threw four touchdown passes. But, again, that was a long time ago. And uh, hopefully we, we can rub some of that magic off to where our guys can throw four touchdown passes uh, at least and give ourselves a chance to go in and, and pull off the upset. Coach, just how ready are you guys to play? I mean, camp's been a grind. Camp is always a grind. How excited are you to, to hit somebody other than yourself? <laughs> well, I, I think if you ask the guys, uh, they're chomping at the bits. You know, we, we've had a really good training camp. Uh, it's been physical. Uh, it's been fast. And, and I think we've gotten better in, in every area, you know. And so we're excited about the opportunity to showcase that um, on, on the national stage. And so – um, you know, 25 days of banging, hitting each other. Uh, you, you do look forward to hitting somebody else in another color. So um, our guys are, are excited about the opportunity. And uh, I think you'll see a team that flies around, that, that, that plays with a lot of passion, a lot of enthusiasm. And, um, you know, that's going to force Carolina to play 
really, really good football. All right. The expectation is if they don't come in prepared, ready to play, that um, you know, we're gonna show them how we play ball down here in Tallahassee on the other side of the railroad tracks. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, if you will, comment a little bit about the players. Have they are they aware of the history of Florida and M slaying the giant, if you will, uh, beating Miami? Are they aware of that history? Have you guys emphasized that this can end up in a win? Well, that's one of the things we talked about uh, when we first um, start talking about the game. Obviously, we've been focusing on training camp, but the first thing I told them was that, guys, we're not going in to, quote, unquote, make history, right? We've done this before, you know, and one of the things about coming to play at a school like FAMU is that there are not many things that you can do that have not been done. Yeah, right? we, we've beaten Power 5 opponents. You know, we were, I think, the first HBCU to actually beat a PWI, you know, back when we beat the University of Tampa. Um, you know, like I said, we beat the University of Miami back in back in 77 or 79. And so, um, you know, we've done these type of things before. Um, you know, we, we've we had players in the NFL. We've had players make All-American. We have Hall of Famers, uh, hopefully about to have another one, Coach Ken Riley. Uh, we have a current player in the NFL now with Marquise Bell, who's doing a phenomenal job with the Dallas Cowboys. And so, again, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to replicate uh, you know, uh, duplicate the success that we've had here uh, at FAMU over, over the course of our history. So our guys are well aware of that. Uh, when they walk through the field house every day, they're reminded of it, of the championships, of the big games, of, of the, the monumental figures who walk these halls. And, and hopefully, you know, we'll add to that. You know, I think Isaiah Land is a guy that will go down in history as one of FAMU's greatest defensive players ever. Uh, I think Xavier Smith, We'll be in that conversation for, you know, one of the greatest wide receivers to ever come through here. I mean, Chris Fadul has a ton of records as a punter, right? Jamari Sheree has a chance to do some of the things that Leroy Van did back in the in the mid-2000s in, in returning kicks. So, again, our guys understand our history, and I think that's something that uh, allows them to go and play loose, play free, knowing that, you know, the, the, that they're part of a program that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to continue the, the legacy that's been, been laid before us. Thanks, Coach. Any Coach. more questions for Coach? I see James Coach. hand up. <laughs> Good morning, Coach. Morning, James. Can you talk a little bit about taking your football team from the training camp or playing shape into game shape, if you will? And again, you're punching the clock. It's week one, and it's time to uh, line them up from scrimmage and get it going. Yeah, I think um, – across the country, you know, everybody goes through training camp. And so for us, it's about transitioning from everyday practicing, you know, the walkthroughs, the meetings, you know, all the things that that are involved in training camp to game mode, right? And we're, you know, we're facing uh, the fact that it's not only game week, it's also the first week of classes. And so our guys have to, you know, acclimatize themselves to now going to class every day, to practicing in the afternoons, um, you know, getting treatment at the times that are designated, um, the lift times being around the class schedules. So all the changes that occur once school starts, you know, but like I told the guys last night, I mean, that doesn't make us unique because everyone in the country has to eventually do that, right? Some sooner than others, right? But being a student athlete is a part of what we do here at this level. And we have to be masters of that as well. So um, we're excited about transitioning to game week. Um, you know, now it's about, more about execution, about making sure that we have, our guys have the legs back and not the, the grind of training camp, you know, the banging, the running, the conditioning, all those things. We've tried to work ourselves in the game shape over the course of these 25 practices, and hopefully by the time we take the field uh, at 8 o'clock on, on Saturday that our guys are, are, are conditioned enough to be able to play four full quarters of football. Coach, recently I had the opportunity to uh, come by, stop by the highest of seven hills and see your training camp, cover that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about Mr. Land? And you alluded to him. Uh, this gentleman has a great opportunity to uh, be one of the all-time greats and be a gentleman who definitely moves on and plays on Sunday. Yeah, I do. He was a special um, young man. You know, you talk about a guy who coming out of high school had one scholarship offer. And that was the Florida AM. Uh, and that offer came not because we he was on our radar or because he was on all these lists. It came because I went to his school to recruit a quarterback <laughs> that he had. 
And it just so happened that the D-line coach, uh, as I was waiting on the quarterback, came out and asked me if I'd watch the, watch the film of his of his situational pass rush. Um, he went to Grayson High School, which is a Power House program there in, in the north of Atlanta. And um, a lot of his teammates went on to play Power 5 football. And so he didn't even really start for them. He was kind of a third down pass rush specialist, went in, watched the film, saw that he had a high motor, saw that he was a developmental guy. You know, he was only about 180 pounds at the time, if that, at, at a little over six foot three. And so we took a chance on him. You know, we saw something in him that we thought would, would you know, eventually make him a good player. Um, don't think any of us saw him becoming the nation's best defensive lineman and, and future NFL player, right? So just extremely happy for him, you know, but we say in this program, you get what you deserve. And he's deserved everything that's come his way because of the way he works, because of his approach to the game, his attitude, his mental toughness, um, you know, the adversity that he's had to overcome being here for the last going on five years. And uh, we're just excited to see what this season brings for him. You know, I, I think barring anything unforeseen, you know, injury or anything like that, uh, he has a chance to, to match his production from last season and maybe even exceed it. You know, he's a special player, special talent. Uh, the NFL scouts see that. You know, everyone that's come through here has raved about his ability to rush the passer. And, and I think they're all circling this game because this will probably be the litmus test for, for many of the NFL personnel to see how he does going up against uh, power five offensive linemen. So I know he's excited about it. Um, he had a very spirited talk last night with the football team doing our sky report. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to watch uh, number 31 go out and uh, wreak havoc on, on ACC quarterbacks like he's done on SWAT quarterbacks over the last couple of years. Coach, in closing, uh, HBCU football appears to be in a good place. Uh, it's been around since the 1800s. You look at Jake Gaither all the way up to yourself, uh, Coach Hub, Billy Joe, and the guys. Um, can you talk about the fan you, fam you brand? And then also um, playing on the big stage. And this is a great opportunity to share HBCU football with uh, the ACC and, and fans across the land, if you will. Yeah, I mean, you, you said it. You know, the history that we have here, um, not only at Florida a &M, but throughout the HBCU landscape, uh, is second to none. You know, when you look at the, the teams that we fielded, the, the, the players that, that have played, you know, the Hall of Famers, the All-Americans, um, you know, individuals who've gone on and done phenomenal things in society outside of football. Um, you name it, we have it, you know, in black college football. And legendary coaches, legendary players, um, phenomenal institutions, you know, you name it. And so just to be a part of this is something that's truly humbling to me, uh, that's truly special. You know, and again, it's not something that we take lightly. You know, when, we, when I walk into this field house every day, um, I look up and I see my name beside some of the greatest coaches that's ever coached the college game. You know, uh, Jake Gaither, William Bell, Rudy Hubbard, Billy Joe, Joe Taylor, you know, Hall of Fame coaches. And just for me to even have my name mentioned with them uh, is something that, that really uh, sends chills down my spine. You know, to sit in an office that Billy Joe Don, that, 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 you know, Ken Riley Don, that Joe Taylor sat in, you know, guys that have meant more to this game than, than we can even imagine. Um, it is just it's something special, you know, but that's, that's the great thing about Florida and them. That's the great thing about walking into this field house every day that you're a part of history, you know, and, and I really do give a, a huge shout out to Carolina, you know, for really making this game an emphasis on HBCUs. Uh, we have, we have honorary coaches, you know, uh, Rudy Hubbard on our side, Bill Hayes and Rob Broadway on their side. And so a week uh, worth of activities, you know, highlighting HBCU culture, highlighting the black experience. And so again, you know, I, my hat goes off to them for, for having the foresight to, to want to put HBCUs on a platform. And so again, it'll be a great game, great events around the game. The Margin 100 will be there, of course, doing their thing. And I know everyone's excited about seeing that. And I think this game is a, is a great opportunity for everybody, not just FAMU, uh, but for HBCUs as a whole. And uh, hopefully we can go in and represent and uh, make everyone proud of the, the, the Don the HBCU uh, name. Thank you, Coach. Uh, good luck this week. Thank you. Coach, You're kind of uh, going out a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can you tell me you got a big game this week? Do you think you had a good team, number one? And then the second question is, 
Hard Rock Stadium. Um, are you thinking about that at all? Uh, and uh, not, not really. You know, again, uh, the emphasis is on North Carolina, right? We got to get our team ready to play. And, um, you know, we got a ton of film to study uh, for Carolina. Um, we got game plans to get done. You know, we have to get our guys prepared to go into a hostile environment because, again, you know, we do have big goals. And one of our goals is to, to knock off North Carolina. Right. This, like I said before, this is not just a money game. This isn't just, hey, let's just roll up there and sit our, sit our starters and just play whoever and just collect the check and get back down to Tallahassee and prepare for Jackson. It's not the way we're approaching this game. You know, this is a great opportunity for our guys to go in and, quote, unquote, get money. You know, and that's what we've been telling our guys the whole week. So we're excited about this opportunity, and, and we'll have plenty of time uh, with eight days of preparation for the Orange Blossom Classic. You know, so we don't have to rush. We don't have to look ahead. Um, because when you do that, uh, you're liable to, to to lose on both ends. And so we definitely want to make sure that we uh, not put the, the card in front of the horse, so to speak, um, be where our feet are. And where our feet are right now is Monday of game week against the North Carolina Tar Heels, and that's our primary focus. Coach, off the field, you had some guys to get baptized. Talk about that first F, faith and your program yeah i mean you you said it you know we have seven words in our program and, and faith is at the top of it and so um just you know the 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 boldness one of our young men uh to to decide to turn their life over <clears throat> you know to, to god is my biggest achievement as a head coach you know no win no championship uh no nfl contract uh none of that can trump uh, these guys making in my opinion the biggest decision of their lives and, and that's to give their lives over to God. And so the fact that we had, you know, 11 guys do that a couple of weeks ago, nine of those guys uh, made the ultimate sacrifice yesterday and got baptized. Uh, it, again, just a rewarding day uh, for, for me as a head football coach. Uh, great moment for our football team. Uh, and the fact that those guys are, are you know, unabashed about their faith and, and being able to publicly display that. Um, it, it's something that, again, I'm grateful for. You know, I'm grateful to be, you know, at a place and in a country where we can publicly, you know, profess our, our faith and, and do those things without fear of ridicule or whatever the case may be. And so, again, it's not, it was, it's, there's nothing that was coerced. You know, we don't make them do it. We don't um, <clears throat> force them to do anything. You know, again, we expose them to, to the spiritual aspect of life because I think it's a huge uh, part of it. I think it's a very important aspect of who we are. Uh, we don't push any particular religion or denomination. You know, we want to expose them to it all. And so those guys made the choice to do that. I'm very happy for them, proud of them for that. And I think that's a, a, a step um, in their life that they'll be able to take with them that'll, that'll give them success uh, in the long run. Thank you. Any more questions for Coach? Yeah, one last question. Coach, uh, LeBron James uh, has a working... Um, uh, relationship, if you will, with, with FAMU, the brand, and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, when we throw back to basketball, uh, Michael Jordan, his impact on culture, sports, uh, the Tar Heels, and just Americana as a whole. Can you talk about that, gentlemen? And, and I know it's not football, but what Michael Jordan means to human beings around the world. And, and many times when they look down at their feet, Sometime they see Air Jordans. <laughs> well, um, per our contractual agreement, I don't know if I'm allowed to, 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 to promote Michael Jordan because <laughs> of LeBron school. But, but no, nah, all jokes aside, you know, I, I think both of those individuals uh, obviously are, are iconic, right? You, know, you talk about generations, um, you know, our generation, your generation, you know, we grew up on Michael Jordan, you know, watching him transcend the game of basketball. You know, you, you credit Larry Bird and, Mike, and Magic, uh, Johnson with bringing the popularity to the NBA back in the early 80s. Um, but when Michael Jordan stepped into the scene, uh, you know, it became a, a global sport. And so, again, just the impact that he's had on the game of basketball, on the culture, uh, on the apparel. I mean, no one did with shoes what Michael Jordan has been able to do. Um, you know, again, so, so again, it's just unbelievable the impact that he's had uh, on this world. And then when you, you add LeBron James to that, you know, a guy that our players 
on FAMU side and North Carolina side get to watch. They grew up watching and just to see what he's done to the game, what he's meant to, uh, you know, black culture. Uh, again, you know, we're blessed to be able to say that we that, you know, we lived in the Michael Jordan, LeBron James era. Right. I mean, there are many uh, more seasoned guys who say they lived in the Bill Russell era. You know, we just lost a giant in Bill Russell you know, a couple of weeks ago, and you had individuals who grew up watching Bill and grew up watching Wilt Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and all those legendary guys, you know, but for, for us, you know, when we're uh, on our last days, we'll get to say, man, I got to watch Michael Jordan win six championships in eight years. Man, I got to watch LeBron James go to 10 straight NBA finals, right? And you're talking about guys that right now are talked about as two of the greatest if not the greatest players to ever play the game, you know? So I, I think the fact that we have a game where the flagship, LeBron James School in FAMU is going to take on the flagship Jordan School in North Carolina. I think that's a story in and of itself, you know. And so again, uh, it's something that we talk about, that we debate about all the time. Who's the greatest? And uh, and you can't go wrong either way, you know, because again, they both meant so much to the sport. Uh, physically, of course, they have things that nobody else has, but even more than that, just a mental approach to the game. Uh, but what they meant off the court, I, I think, is really even more important than what they've done on the court. Uh, Le LeBron James opening the Promise School and what he's been able to do with that, you know. And so again, it's just it's amazing to to be able to attach yourself to those brands and the fact that LeBron James of all the schools in the country that he could have picked decided to partner with Florida and University uh, is something that speaks waves and volumes. So just you know, thankful to those two individuals. I don't know either one personally. Uh, people think I have LeBron James on speed dial, but I don't. And so again, never had a conversation with the guy. Hope to at some point. Uh, hope he can come to a game and show up at some point, but uh, forever grateful to him and, and for what he's done to this sport and Michael Jordan as well, because obviously he's a guy that I grew up idolizing as well. Thank you, coach. Have a blessed week. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. All right. Any more questions? Uh, my last question, it re relates to something you mentioned earlier. You were talking about the pace of North Carolina's offense how do you replicate that pace of play in practice, especially when you've kind of gone away from putting good on good and more have separated the players into first and second team? Uh, well, you know, we play with tempo as well, you know, so we've gone against each other during training camp. We've tried to simulate as much tempo peers, as many tempo peers as we can. And so hopefully their speed won't be something that's surprising to us. You know, um, we got to do a really good job of, seeing personnel, you know, knowing when they go fast, when they sub, and being able to match our substitution patterns with them. Uh, I think that's when tempo offenses can create an advantage is when they're going fast when you're trying to substitute. And so just knowing what that looks like, getting a good idea of when, they're, when they want to change tempos uh, is what our defense has to be prepared for. But communication is going to be critical. Our discipline is going to be critical, knowing where the, their top players are. You must know where number 11 is on every single play. You know, they're going to find ways to get Josh Downs uh, and mismatches across the uh, – try to find ways to get Josh Downs and mismatches, put them in the backfield, uh, put them out wide, motion them. And so, again, just knowing where he is at all times is going to be critical, um, but also being able to, again, get lined up, get the call in, communicate it across the board, and play. If we can do that, I think uh, the dark cloud defense stands a great chance to, to, to neutralize a uh, high-powered offense. But if we can't get lined up, if we get out gap. If we don't stay over the top and give up explosive plays, uh, it, it can be a long day for us. So, again, that's been the emphasis this week. And um, we'll see, you know, with four more days of preparation, um, how prepared we'll be for their up-tempo. All right, Coach. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. Look forward to uh, talking to you all next week. Thanks, Coach. Uh, thank you, everyone. I will email the um, recording, a uh, link to the recording. Um, so, and uh, post game um, will be available. Zoom, same link, and we'll be here same time, same time next week. Thank you, Josh. Sure. Yeah,